All right, guys. So, as y'all all know, you probably can't see me right now because I'm in the car driving down the interstate. But she had someone distract Max Saturday night, causing him to miss an alert, and she fell and hit her head while she was in Walmart, and she was by herself. So, over the past few days, her concussion at first wasn't bad, we thought, but it's gotten worse. One of her pupils started getting bigger, and if y'all follow her on live and all that, she's probably thought about all this. But, tonight she called me when I was at work, and she had thrown up. When I get there, she's very out of it. Like, not her normal self, worse than last night. So... We had the EMTs, ambulance, all that, paramedics come and check her. They all thought it would be best if she went to the hospital by ambulance. So right now I am on my way to drop Liam off at my grandparents and then I'm going to be heading to the hospital. I've got Max, you can't really see him. So I've got him, I'm going to take him to her and we'll find out what's going on. She doesn't know I'm doing this yet. Uh, this sucks. It really does. Um, but we will keep you updated and let you know what's going on. Alright guys, so I just dropped Liam off at my grandparents. Just got a call from Dom's phone. It was a paramedic. So tonight's going to be a long night. Um, apparently the hospital that we're taking her to is kind of slow backed up full right now and the other hospital out of the two we have choices to go to that have a neurologist on standby or whatever is I guess their term was on on vert or something I don't know what it was but like they're both packed out it's apparently been hard to find a hospital the past few nights that can see you the paramedic just said her best bet would be Grandview so we're gonna go there we're gonna see what happens, see how long the wait is gonna be. Um, so I guess we'll be with Dom shortly. All right. All right guys, so we are here at Grandview. Uh, I've got Max. Now it's just finding her. So this is gonna be the fun part. She came by ambulance, so I don't know if they went ahead and took her in her room, but if, because they were busy, she's sitting in the waiting room. You don't know. So let's see. one thing that's a dope view I don't know if y'all can see it but it is kind of cool well, let's find out hey April right was it hey. yeah did uh, they put her in the waiting room or no we've got her in the hallway she's in the hallway there's like three stretchers in front of us you don't have to go out to the waiting room out front. When we get her in a room, they'll let you back. Okay. But until we get her in well, a room. Well, can I walk in with you to get Max to her? Do what? Can I walk in with you just to get him to her? Does she really, really need him right now? It would be best. Because there's like three. Because if she has one of her moments and passes out or has a an I mean, episode. she's laying down. She's on the stretcher. She's on the stretcher? Yeah, she's not getting uh, up or moving. She's laying on the stretcher. See, there's like four other ambulance stretchers right there with us. Yeah. And that's why I said if you can hold off. Well, I mean, I just think it'd be best because she also has PTSD and he helps with that too. She's doing good right now. Yeah. She's having had any issues. She's talking to, um, I just forgot his name. Oh my gosh. Pretty much. The guy that I was working with. <laughs> I know. My mind I, just as, went as long as like no one looks like a no, Santa look, Claus per looking person, I guess we'll be good. Yeah, fine is weird to say. Yeah. She's doing fine. They're just so busy. And she's right there. See the guy in the red shirt standing yeah. there? She's on the other side of him. And they're talking yeah. and looking at pictures. Okay. Yeah, she looks like she's but doing all right right now. Other, we have other ambulance patients. Yeah, and I that's see why that. I said if you can hold off. All right. That would be now if she starts wigging or flipping or something, I'll come get you. Okay. 
and we'll get them. But if it all pop, because see, that's a hallway that they've got to get through too, because there's patient rooms and stuff. Yeah, don't so, want him to be in the way or anything. Well, and it's, I mean, I have nothing against him. My brother has one, yeah. and I get pissy at people when they're like, and now, you know, and I'm, so I'm, I'm all, I don't have a, a bit of problem with yeah. it. Yeah. But it's just, with all, everything just going on in there. So, I mean, she, she's doing great right now. All right, good. Well, you so, heard that, guys, all right? Mm -hmm. We're here what kind, but All right, guys, so guess what? Regular, Finally made it to a room. Regular shift. Wait, what? Your vlog. Smile, yeah. It says do not pay. Yeah. I know that's why you came in here. <laughs> but, uh, in here but, yeah. So, yeah, she's finally got a room. And this what? Does that Hi. say anything? I'm so confused. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, well, I've been vlogging. Like a lot of loops. Is it? A lot of loops. <laughs> um, here, I'm, I'm clipping. I'm concentrate, so, like. How am I even supposed to do that? And it's just like I told you about that today, like the brain fogs where it's like my head is fuzzy and it's hard to focus and concentrate. And my head just started hurting really bad too. Yeah, uh, you were denying them yesterday. Okay, I denied everything, it's not my fault. But like the lights are hurting my eyes. The noises are hurting my ears. Noises are hurting my eyes. That's what I literally to say but my neck is hurting and my head I feel like someone's hammering it with a hammer and I think I might throw up again I've thrown up three times three times in three hours is that good mm, probably not anything else hmm have they given you IVs or anything? Um, no, I thought they were gonna run fluid in the ER for in the ambulance. They didn't. They just stuck me with a needle. Oh. And um, yeah, you, know, you didn't know about that, did you? Oh, I can see the needle in your arm. Oh well, sorry, you weren't in the ambulance. I don't remember how I got into the ambulance. She had to tell me how I got there. What happened at the house? Hey, you just really weren't answering them or anything, so we all thought it would be best if you went by ambulance. What do you mean? Like, all I remember, I remember sitting on the couch wanting my Powerade. You never said anything about a Powerade to me. That's what I remember, and the next thing I know, I'm in an ambulance. I freaked out a little bit. I remember freaking out while she was like, do you know where you are? I was like, I'm in an ambulance. Why the hell am I in an ambulance? And then she told me that I walked to the ambulance. No, you didn't. How did I? They that, came in with a Yeah, thing. she said I walked to the thingy, the gurney in, in they the brought garage. That in the, no, they brought it all the way in the house. Oh, she said I got on it in the garage. No, they went through the garage. I'm back the crowd so they go to the garage. And so, why did I go in an ambulance? Why didn't you take me? That's why you got off work, wasn't it? It's for you to bring me. I had to make sure Liam was taken care of and all that. Couldn't just, you kind of can't just take a baby but in an ambulance. why did you call the ambulance? Like, when did you even call the ambulance? When I was pulling into Jubilee. Oh, uh, why'd you call him? You hadn't even been inside yet. Because... I knew from talking to you that you needed to go, and after last night. So, so why, when we got when they got in there, you said I wasn't talking to them? No, you weren't. I don't right remember right. any of that. I'm sorry, I'm asking yeah. a lot of questions. You don't. You really didn't say anything. To when they were asking you questions, I was having to answer because you would just sit there and stare. You mean like, what do you mean, like I was just sitting there staring? Like you're just zoned out and gone, not like mentally there. Oh. Are you going to turn this light off like I asked? I don't know you asked to turn it off, but I don't know how to turn it off. Oh, because it's so bright. Um, I don't even think you asked to turn it off, you just said the light was bothering you. Oh. Um, I feel like I'm going to puke again. Well, you had bags. Where'd they go? They're behind me, I think. My head hurts really bad. Yep, they are with your phone. Do you need me to hand you one? I don't know if I need it. My head.
head's hurting a little bit. Like, so is my neck. It's like the issue is like my neck and my head. Well, so right now that's kind of where she's at. I guess there'll be more to update whenever. Wait, were you were vlogging? <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah, she didn't know I had the camera on because I don't know. But. Hey, we picked up this little booger on the way. Can you say night night? Come on, can you say night night? Liam. Can you say night night? night. Mm. So, yeah. Um. My head still hurts really bad, I'm still really just not feeling good, so I'll update y'all on the Bye. So, the morning afternoon, noon, yeah, the morning afternoon after, <coughs> if that makes sense. Um, um, so, this is the morning, afternoon, after, the next afternoon, I can't make sense, it is, um, what time is it right now? It is 2.12 p.m. and we just woke up, all three of us. Well, four, I guess, including Max. Um, we are getting ready. Oh, no, come here. Okay. okay, we'll go get it. Let's go get it. Go ahead. Got to bring Liam to the doctor. He is sick and it got worse overnight. And so he's going to the doctor today. I know. Chase is off work today. Um, making sure that I'm a-okay here. And that um, I'm not by myself. And that I'm okay. So, yeah. Um, Post-concussion syndrome was the issue. And so, anyway. Um, but... That was just the update. My head still hurts. I still feel like crap, but I'm gonna try to get a little man here to the doctor. So, um, well, I'll be going. Chase is driving, but I'm gonna be participating. Bye, guys. So, um, trying to catch everyone up a little bit and let this make some sense. So, what happened? Um, it is is it it is um wednesday um i was in the emergency room last night um i've taken my medications so i'm feeling a little okay right now my head's not hurting quite as bad and my nausea is gone at the moment um but saturday night um i was at walmart and we had been shopping and um we got to self-checkout and um Max, my service dog, was behind me in what I call a block. Um, he had his body placed behind me, keeping himself between me and everything else going on. It's um, one of his tasks he is trained to do. Um, I was facing the self-checkout, um, scanning my items, and um, I hear, you know, someone talking, and um, I just didn't think anything of it and then Max pushed into me really hard um, that's one of the other things he's trying to do is when people get close to us um, he is trying to push into me um, wherever whatever side he's on if people are coming from that side he's trying to push into me um, kind of like lean into me and apply pressure so that I feel it so that I know and because of that I turned around and um, there was a guy standing there talking to him um, like making crazy eyes at him and when I say crazy eyes you know there's like balls that you can get that you can squeeze and like eyes pop out of them like really big literally making eyes like that like big bulging eyes at him and um, trying to pet him and so I told him to stop and explain to him you can't do that that it, you know it's legal he can miss an alert and um, so I turned around and I continued to um, scan the items I had and I was talking to the cashier assistants I guess that was over there by self-checkout and uh, her name was Lila I think is how you pronounce it Lila or Lila 
um, we'll just say Leela, but um, we were talking and later after um, I had passed out and because um, I sat there for probably 30, 40 minutes, um, they actually called EMTs and I had to sit there for a little bit to uh, get to where I was feeling good enough to try to get up and go home. But um, I later learned afterwards um, that while we were talking, she said, it had been maybe two minutes since the guy had walked off and um, since the initial incident with him messing with Max and um, she said that I looked down at Max and I said oh no you missed an alert and I looked up and uh, she said that as soon as I like as I looked up she watched the color completely drain from my face and I just went ghost white and I slammed to the floor. Um, she said when my head hit the floor that you could hear my head hit, um, that I fell so hard. And um, I don't remember even saying anything to Max. Um, that's not something I remember, but she told me she was like, you look down. And she, this is what she did to show me. She said, you went, uh-oh, he missed an alert. And I looked up and that was it. I was out. Um, I don't remember saying anything to Max, and I guess subconsciously I realized that he had missed an alert, and I realized that, you know, in that split second, because I, I felt it literally seconds before I went down, not enough time to, like, do anything, because I remember all of a sudden just feeling that wave hit me, like, oh, I'm passing out, and um, I remember feeling that, and um, that's, you know, the last thing I remember, but, um, Max's alerts, he normally gives me, it's about a two minute, anywhere from a minute to two minute um, range on when I'm going to pass out. So when he alerts me, I know I've got a minute and um, gives me a chance to get somewhere to lay down, um, you know, get comfortable. Sometimes his alerts, you know, give me a little longer, but on average, it's about two minutes that I have to get somewhere and lay down. And, um based on the time that the guy was interacting and distracting Max to when I passed out, that would have been the time, that crucial moment that Max needed for him to alert to me to let me know that um, I did pass or that I was going to pass out. And because of him being distracted and someone interacting with him, um, he was not able to give me that crucial alert. And I ended up hitting my head very hard and ended up with a concussion. Um, Saturday night, um, after it happened, EMT showed up and um, they thought I was fine. I asked them, I was like, do you think I'm fine? Do you think I'm showing signs of a concussion? And um, at the time, they said, no, I think you're fine. You know, you're probably going to be a little sore, but, you know, your eyes are responding right. Um, you know, you're very responsive. And, um, you know, it, it was just a matter of everything seemed okay, my vitals were fine, and um, so they, I denied and aimed going to the hospital in an ambulance, and I signed my form, and I filled out the injury statement that the Walmart manager gave me, just saying that the um, injury did take place, it wasn't their fault, explaining what happened, I actually have a photo of that on my Instagram, um, and now, whew, I'm a little out of breath, sorry. Um, what was I saying? Um, right, um, so Sunday is kind of when things really started going downhill. I started getting more than just a headache, um, you know, it wasn't just a headache and neck pain anymore. It was, the nausea started, um, it was my chest pain started, um, my pupil started blowing out Monday. But, um, Monday, uh, I think I have my days mixed up. Today's Wednesday. I guess it was Tuesday. So, no, Sunday is when my pupil started, my right pupil started getting larger. Um, and I went to the fire station and they checked me out again. Um, they said, yeah, your pupil is larger, you know, um, 
told me what to keep an eye out for if I started throwing up, if my pupil, if it blew out, and meaning if it dilated super, super large, if my eyes stopped responding, and just gave me a list of things to keep an eye out for, for when I should go to the doctor or the hospital. So Monday came, and when Monday came, it was everything just really started getting worse. Sunday night, I had started just kind of spacing out, and I remember feeling like kind of spacey, but it wasn't like anything too crazy, and then Monday, I really started spacing out. Um, according to my husband, he said that um, I was just having, like he would be talking to me, and it's like I wasn't there. Um, like I'd just be stared off, spaced out, didn't hear him, wouldn't respond. And um, I had my first episode where I vomited um, and I didn't tell him about it because <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, I may have just, might just be heartburn, I may have just ate something, you know, whatever. And I didn't think anything of it. And so yesterday, Tuesday, um, I guess everything really just kind of went downhill. Um, he said that I, um, I remember calling him. I remember I threw up again. And I remember calling him. He was at work and um, he was closing. And I remember calling him just to let him know to double check what time he got off work, see if maybe, you know, he'd get out like maybe just an hour sooner. And um, just making sure, you know, letting him know I threw up again. You know, my head is, I remember my head had started hurting a whole lot more. Um, it, it was just everything was getting a lot worse. And um, he said I was, he could tell, I guess, the way I was acting on the phone that things just were getting really worse. And so he, uh, apparently left work and started coming home. I didn't expect it. And the next thing I know, he's, you know, in the house in front of me. I'm like, what are you doing? And I was apparently a little spaced out when he got there. And so, um, but I do remember seeing him like, what are you doing? And, um, he actually called the ambulance on the way to the house, um, because he was so worried about me because of the way I was acting. Um, I remember them being there the EMTs being here and downstairs in the living room. I don't remember how I got to the ambulance or the stretcher. Um, I don't remember how I got to that. Um, what I do remember is wanting to go to the refrigerator and get my Gatorade. I remember looking past all of them at the refrigerator wanting my gate or my Powerade because I was thirsty. I remember that. But um, apparently Chase said they helped me. They actually brought the stretcher into the house. Um, and he moved the, um, uh, asked him if, uh, it would be easier if he let him come in through the garage. And so he went and moved the car out of the garage and, um, oh, he yeah, moved the car out of the garage and, um, he said they brought the stretcher into the garage and I actually, they helped me walk out there they put me on the stretcher in the garage and then put me in the ambulance. And I don't remember any of that. Um, I do remember being in the ambulance, not really knowing why at first. And I remember thinking, what happened? So for me, I have so many medical issues. It's not unusual for me to go to the hospital. And I guess at first I was just thinking, oh, something, you know, must have happened. And I don't remember exactly. I didn't remember why exactly. <laughs> Um, the EMTs, they were great. God, I loved them. They were awesome. Uh, they were really great. Um, they, we were together for a little over, probably about two and a half hours because, um, they didn't have any rooms when we got to the hospital, so we were just kind of hanging out. Um, the initial concern was a possible brain bleed because of my symptoms and, uh, how bad I was zoning in and out and my right pupil was getting larger. And, um, but it came down to, you know, I had the CTs done, it came back clear, no skull fracture and no blood on the brain. And, um, I got diagnosed with post-concussion syndrome. Sorry, um, I kind of started spacing out a little bit and I could feel it. And so I just had 
just had to take a minute to try to get my thoughts collected because I am still not doing that great and trying to do this video is, it's taking a lot to try to do this. Um, but post-concussion syndrome is a complex, complex disorder in which various symptoms such as headaches and dizziness last for weeks and sometimes months after the injury that caused the concussion. Concussion is a mild traumatic brain injury that usually happens after a blow to the head. It can also occur with violent shaking and movement of the head or body. Um, let's see. In most people, symptoms occur within the first seven to 10 days and go away within three months. Sometimes they can persist, persist for a year or more. So symptoms, headaches, dizziness, fatigue, irritability, anxiety, insomnia loss of concentration and memory, ringing in the ears, blurry vision, noise and light sensitivity, um, rarely decrease in taste and smell. So I have all of those symptoms other than the um, decrease in taste and smell. Um, I do have the ringing in the ears. It's not too awful and it's just kind of here and there. Um, light sensitivity, noise sensitivity are really bad, which is why I'm facing this way I'm doing this video because there's a wall right there and I know the lights on behind me but it's not as bad because I'm looking at the wall um so yeah all of that my headache and the Disney dizziness and all of that the concentration and memory loss that is probably the worst of everything and nausea as well um Let's see, post-concussion headaches can vary and may feel like tension-type headaches or migraines. Um, most often, they are tension-type headaches, and these may be associated with the neck injury that happened at the same time as the head injury, which is kind of where I'm at because I did injure my neck um, somehow. Um, I've actually, my neck is very painful and stiff and sore, um, but yeah, I'm trying to see. Uh, I think that was really all that showed. But yeah, it can continue for weeks, months, or a year or more after the concussion. And it is a mild form of the traumatic brain injury. And it's just the onset of your symptoms. Um, just lasts longer and it can just take a little longer to recover. Um, and, and this is why I have my channel. Um, I, I started my YouTube in hopes that it would help educate people and show people, you know, why you shouldn't distract a service dog. And, um, you know, I, I guess I never imagined, I've had people distract Max before, but I've never had someone distract him when, you know, in that crucial moment that like I needed him. Um, service dogs are very much lifesavers. We do depend on them. We don't have them just because it's for fun or because we want them. We have them because we really do need them and the pain that I am experiencing right now um, because this is nothing short than pain um, as far as the pain that I am physically going through and the pain that I'm mentally and emotionally going through mm -hmm. from this um, and, and it's just you know all of this could have been avoid avoided had that person heated my dog's vest where it says service dog do not pet and service dog I'm working do not distract um, if that person would have used a little common sense and would have left the service dog alone um, I could have avoided this entire situation and um, I'm hoping that this video maybe helps people realize you know this isn't a joke and um, this isn't a joke and that um, isn't a joke and um I don't remember what I was saying this wasn't a joke
joke. Um, I don't remember. Um, what was I saying? It's not a joke and this should be taken seriously because um, you never know what the person's condition is and why they have a service dog and why they need their service dog. And so it's, um, if you see a service dog in per, and if you see a service dog in public, you should 100% ignore them and leave them alone because um, the last thing you want to do is hurt someone. And interfering with the service dog, it is illegal and when you interfere with the service dog and the handler gets hurt like I have been hurt um, you can face consequences um, you know um, this guy if I decide for whatever reason that I want to pursue it which I'm kind of in the mindset right now where um, I'm dealing with enough I am gonna make a police report about it see if they can go ahead and pull the footage just so we have it um, but I think if anything I would probably just want them to let the guy know what happened and what he did and um, just kind of like a little slap on the wrist kind of thing like this is what you did this is what um, you know could happen you this these are the legal um, issues you could face from a situation like this because you can face legal issues and um, you can get into legal trouble interfering with the service dog especially if their handler gets hurt <laughs> And so, um, I don't really know what my course of action will be on this. Um, I am just really not sure and I don't think I'm really in the best mindset to really determine that. I'm at this point, I definitely need to give myself a week or two to try to get better um, and get to where I can at least concentrate and focus a little more than just, you know, five, ten minutes at a time and um, then maybe try to see what I want to do about it. Um, so I, I don't know when, you know, I, I don't want someone's life completely ruined over it, but um, I definitely do think at the very least the guy should at least know um, what he did, you know, and how it affected someone. Um, so anyway, guys, um, this was the video and um, I hope you enjoy it. I have not actually seen any of the footage yet that you guys just watched. Um, I'm about to see it because I'm about to um, try to edit all of this together the best I can. I'll probably have to get Chase to help me a little bit. Um, but I'm about to watch all of it for the first time. Chase said he vlogged a lot and I have no idea what that means. So I'm, I'm interested to see what my husband did and um, by the time you guys see this I will already have seen all the footage but at this moment that I'm recording this clip I have not seen any of it yet and I'm kind of interested. Um, so anyway guys I hope you all have a wonderful day.